Hi guys, HC65MA here. Uh, in this video I'd like to talk about how to use uh, SimChair Mark IV software uh, both for uh, master controller and peripherals. I'd like to talk about uh, how to flash peripherals, how to use uh, the new flashing cable, how to use uh, old Mark III flashing cable with new Mark IV hardware, and uh, I would also like to talk just a bit about uh, master controller uh, configuration. Uh, so here we have a few things that will help us uh, in this video. This is the uh, Mark IV master controller. This is an Ethernet cable, uh, a regular one, which you can use to connect your PC to uh, uh, Internet. This is the uh, simple pedestal device. This is uh, an old Mark III flashing cable. This is a new Mark IV uh, flashing cable with, uh, you know, based on uh, uh, FTDI 232 board. A very nice board. Uh, I will talk about a bit uh, about that a bit later. And here we have uh, the uh, micro USB cable from IKEA. Uh, a very nice one to So, uh let's start with uh going to Arduino site. Uh, let's imagine uh, you are very complete newbies and uh, we want to get the IDE which we don't have installed yet. So we just Google Arduino, go to the uh, Arduino site and then we download Windows installer. Note that uh, we want this one, not this one, because with this one uh, it's a bit you know harder to install libraries uh you just have to copy it into a different folder but uh it's kind of you know harder to find than for this one which is just c program files x86 libraries arduino libraries yeah i will show it to you uh in a few moments so we download it and install it uh, i won't be showing this process as it's pretty much standard uh, and I have it installed already, so just remember you need this one. Then after we uh, finished downloading and installing the IDE, we have to go to GitHub and look for uh, SimChair for software repo. So. Uh, Yeah, we have it here. Uh, yeah, I guess we have to. Yeah. So uh, you have to press clone or download and download zip. It will download the whole repo to your PC. Uh, I won't be doing this uh, either because I have downloaded it already. So uh, this repo contains uh, everything you need to run uh, the uh, firmware. As you can see we have uh, master controller firmware, peripherals firmware and libraries uh, that are needed to compile the master controller firmware. So let's assume that we have downloaded uh, our whole repo to this folder so uh, we can go and uh, open c program files x86 and arduino libraries uh, this is first thing we need to do we have to copy libraries these two folders from here to there uh, I have them already uh, copied, so uh, I won't be doing that as well, but 
just to keep that in mind so uh, you have just like uh, copy and paste uh, this stuff here and uh, that's it after we have finished this installing libraries uh, we have to uh, you know flash the master controller uh, we open the master controller folder and any of these files you can't uh, change anything in uh, you know how these files are called it's very important don't rename anything uh, all these files uh, must reside together because you know uh, it's all being uh, compiled into one single file uh, on the uh, you know compilation state uh, stage. So if you move something from this dir, nothing will work. Uh, keep that in mind. Don't touch anything. Just open it and uh, compile it. And uh, if you want to change something, just change it and. Uh, I will be, uh, you know, talking about how to add your own custom devices in a separate video for uh, more advanced users. Uh, it can be done. It's one of the features of uh, this firmware. Uh, new firmware design allows for, uh, you know, easily adding uh, your uh, on devices or for example if you wired your devices uh, differently than uh, it is recommended in the manual uh, it's not a big deal uh, you know it was a really big deal in uh, SimShare Mark 3 but it is no longer because now you can add configuration overrides uh, for uh, your own devices and this way you can update your software without any uh, conflicts you know uh, you don't have to merge configuration files every time uh, you know for example if I added something and you want to update your uh, configuration you just uh, you know just download the whole repo uh, and put your existing device devices uh, files in here and uh, your uh, uh, no, devices will be uh, uh, your devices uh, your uh, settings for uh, for your devices will be copied over uh, you know uh, the standard default settings so I will be talking about it uh, in the next video about software so uh, let's start with uh, a short description of what uh, you see in the uh, master controller firmware so you can see a lot of tabs so uh, here you can see device definition step here you have to manually select what uh, is connected to your uh, controller so basically uh, for example uh, we have a simple pedestal device so we will be selecting just the uh, simple pedestal and I will be commenting out everything else So uh, each of these devices is actually is, uh, will show up as a separate joystick in your uh, Joy CPL window. So keep that in mind. And like uh, the Mark Free software, where uh, you know uh, we had free joysticks with a lot of buttons, and every device was uh, you know was mapped to 
these joysticks here we have uh, a separate joystick for each device it's actually much better because uh, now we don't have any conflicts uh, we can use any number of devices at once and most importantly we can use uh, a few of master controllers at once and for example you can uh, select define simple pedestal on controller one and you can for example define like cyclic base on controller two and you can flash uh you know two controllers this way and one will only uh have cyclic and the second one will only have simple pedestal is you know just uh, an example so uh, let's move on to the next step uh, you can see here we have the configuration tab it's another very important tab that uh, is meant to be changed by user uh, by default we have some recommended configuration here which uh, like you know I feel is the best one that suits for everyone uh, with all major features enabled you can then uh, if you don't like something you can disable some special features like DCS Huey compatibility mode or uh, you know button press and throttle cut off but I, I'm not sure uh, why you may want it or you can for example for a simple pedestal you can change uh, which button works as uh, mouse button left or right for example by default we have uh, the red button uh, sorry I have the red button as the uh, left mouse button. Yeah, sorry, uh, black button as a red mouse button, uh, left mouse button, and the red button as a pointer speed uh, selector button. So basically, it toggles between uh, a fast pointer and the precise pointer. So this stick uh, also have two pointer mo uh, pointer speeds so if you deviate it slightly uh, the pointer will move uh, slowly and uh, it will be quite precise if you deviate it further it will more it will move uh, faster and this thing provides two additional uh, speed levels for uh, the uh, you know pointer but uh, for example, if you want this button to be uh, your mouse click button or this one, you can uh, change it here in uh, where is it? Uh, you can change it uh, here. So left mouse button, right mouse button. If, as you can see, the right mouse button is disabled because I uh, simply haven't found use for it. Because uh, everything, at least the next point, can be done with the uh, left mouse button. So uh, simply doesn't uh, s the button is simply not needed, at least for me. So if you feel differently then you can always change it and assign any of uh, for example you can see uh, like uh, when you press uh, for example this button it pops up uh, as button free in JCPL here right uh, for example like here we have we see when you press it it pops like button free so you just uh, like write free here and that's it it will work as right mouse, mouse button so basically uh, all this stuff is documented right here uh, there is no uh, no separate documentation on the software part because it's, uh, it changes really often and uh, it's very hard to you know uh, can drew an uh, adequate uh, docs about the stuff that changes like every week or so so uh, basically just uh, you know use the default setting and uh, if you feel that something is off 
you can just uh, look in here and uh, read comments and basically I tried to make all uh, this uh, stuff quite self-explanatory so you can always contact me uh, for uh, you know if you have some questions about what does what and I will try to help you for example uh, here you can uh, see some hardware related parameters for our simple pedestal your stick uh, center may be slightly off it's not a problem at all uh, you just need to set it correctly so basically you just zero print this thing and uh, you know you can write it there after it otherwise uh, when you like turn it on the uh, mouse pointer will be moving slightly sideways so uh, this is pretty much all I can say about configuration uh, it's you know quite a large section and it will be getting larger and larger over time uh, so just you know read uh, you know stuff here is divided uh, with tags so for example here we have stuff for uh, collective levers it's all uh, relative to you know it's all uh, meant for collective levers so uh, Collective global means uh, some parameters uh, that needs uh, that are needed for uh, you know every collective lever uh, in the uh, line, and then we have some uh, you know stuff here like for compact collective uh, for collective based on throttle we will have some parameters for single engine collective for twin engine collective etc. You can also have your own parameters for your own devices, uh, devices here, but I will show you how to do it in the uh, better way. Uh, rather than put it, uh, to put it here, you can create your own files. Uh, I will show it to you in another video. So for now, that's it with the uh, configuration. Uh, here we have constants, basically can see mm, th these are addresses of the uh, devices it's uh, basically you shouldn't change anything here structures same thing it's for uh, you know for those who know what this stuff is for it doesn't meant to be uh, you know changed and other uh, stuff I will be talking about in the next video uh, basically what you need for setup uh, you know basic setup of your uh, hardware is the configuration tab and the uh, device tab for example if we want to go and uh, calibrate our compact collective we will need uh, to print its you know values to test if any everything works then we have stuff here you can see it's a large uh, debug output so basically we uncommented and uh, we will see this output on the serial port I will be showing this thing to you in a minute uh, we will be doing it with the uh, simple pedestal so let's start with flashing our controller uh, to do it uh, we simply need to connect it to you know, USB here so I have to select tools, board Arduino Leonardo then uh, I have to select a, uh, select a COM port and 
then basically uh, after I have selected which device uh, I want to have in this particular controller uh, I simply have to press upload and that's it it will flash our controller alright so uh, as I've said earlier we have one joystick per each device a separate joystick per each device uh, all joysticks will be called uh, Arduino Leonardo or, ed or uh, ED Tracker if you have used ED Tracker earlier uh, no worries uh, that is because you know uh, some stuff is uh, USB descriptors and uh, no uh, I won't be uh, diving into this topic further just remember that if you have used ID tracker it may uh, be called ID tracker otherwise it will be called Arduino Leonardo they all, all of these joysticks will be called uh, either ID tracker or Arduino Leonardo so uh, we have the joystick for our uh, pedestal that is cool uh, now we need to flash our uh, you know device itself uh, and for it uh, we will be using our uh, nice new FTDI 232 uh, cable and we'll go to peripherals folder here we have a uh, simple pedestal and its firmware so the process is basically the same we have to select uh, Arduino Pro Mini which is inside of our uh, simple pedestal we have Pro Minis in every device except for uh, you know uh, pedals and cyclic which have uh, the IDS1115 uh, ADC in them uh, and it doesn't need to be flashed you can uh, you know see it right away in master controller and basically you test it from master controller uh, here you have select the com port so we will connect our uh, USB cable uh, so So here I will use uh, you know the same port that is used for connecting it to I squared C bus here it powers up now uh, what's so cool about uh, FTDI 232 board rather than with you know uh, the uh, old PL 23031 uh, this board is only slightly more expensive like uh, like one dollar more expensive but uh, it has the uh, DTR pin on it uh, this DTR pin uh, pulls reset circuit when uh, it's flashed uh, so basically you select the Pro Mini here you select the COM port and you press like uh, upload here and then you can see it works right from the box you have to do nothing with it now uh, with the old cable
here it's the uh, PL2303 which was uh, the recommended default for uh, the SimShare Mark III I can do the same thing I can uh, flash it using this cable without any problems but I will have to press a reset button here this one so you can see uh, probably probably not very good let me try to anyway here we have the MCU reset button so you press it with something you know like a pencil uh, you have to press it uh, in the moment where lines here will stop running and in this particular moment you press the reset button let me show it to you guys because you know uh, it I remember that this stuff caused problems for uh, some guys so I press upload and here now I press reset button and it flashes without any problems as well so uh, pretty simple but uh, the problem with this board uh, besides you know uh, having to press reset button is that it requires drivers under uh, windows and the problem with it is that uh, this is a clone board it's not original because original board is quite expensive uh, and uh, the developers were kinda you know upset with Chinese guys cloning their board so they decided to break all of their boards with uh, you know uh, uh, their, driver, their uh, latest driver from their side only works with original boards and uh, does not work with clones so uh, basically uh, you will have to look for the driver that works which is uh, a real pain actually and I only noticed this thing uh, like when one of uh, the guys in the community he, encou uh, he encountered uh, this problem and uh, now after that I decided to switch to FTDI board because it's much uh, you know better much simpler it has TTR so whatever it's really better so uh, how do you you know debug stuff when you for example want to check something with you know, the uh, peripheral firmware you can press uh, you can plug our new nice fashion cable uh, how to make this cable it is described on uh, the master controller page on uh, my site hc605ma.org in master controller section so uh, let's say we want to check some you now debug stuff I will uncomment define calibrate here and we can see that uh, we will have quite a while of debug output that will show us that our uh, buttons and stuff works so uh, this is what you need to check if you know something goes wrong between these two guys uh, you can always check that this one works and this one works uh, separately so you will uh, then understand that the problem is probably here or, on, or in the uh, wiring of the socket which is very popular problem actually so uh, what we need to do is we select our com port yeah we check that the pro mini is selected and we press flash so uh, then we can look at the serial monitor uh, we have to make sure that we have the correct speed uh, selected here 
and you can see our debug output so uh, for example we can uh, move our mini stick and we can see some values we can see is the uh, center value by the way we can see the uh, view axis value and we can check our uh, you know buttons here for example look at that every button press i make it should result in uh, one digit popping up somewhere in the output so as long as you have ones for each button or switch here your hardware is wired uh, perfectly and you may be absolutely sure that it will work uh, everything's fine with it so uh, you basically close the stuff, comment out, define calibrate, and flash it again. Uh, usually the process for calibration of uh, devices uh, is described on uh, the uh, assembly manual page. So for a uh, simple pedestal in fact it's just you know uh, it's just needed to test if all buttons work uh, correctly so we have finished with uh, our peripheral we know it works uh, you know fine now we can use our uh, Ethernet cable, regular Ethernet cable to connect it to yeah, we'll make it shorter yeah so you can plug it in any port here you plug it here and that's it uh, now Yeah, you probably may need to reset the... You can see it works now. This uh, is the left mouse button, so uh, this moves the cursor. For example, I can uh, press the uh, left mouse button here. Hmm. I can switch, uh, you know, mouse pointer speed. So basically that's it. Uh, we talked about uh, you know peripheral flashing. We talked about master controller flashing. So uh, we can now close the peripheral firmware. So uh, probably the last uh, thing that uh, is left that we hadn't talked about is uh, how to look up stuff for uh, master controller firmware configuration and uh, let's try you know configuring our uh, simple pedestal. So for example, uh, let's say I want to adjust the center point of uh, my mini stick so I can uncomment this debug output here 
I flash the controller. And I open serial monitor and I see the same output here. So I can uh, move stuff and uh, look up, uh, you know, whatever happens here. So, uh, Basically, uh, when I looked up what I need, I can comment it back and I can go change stuff in here in configuration. So, for example, I can change this center values. Uh, I won't be doing that because uh, they are fine, but I can do it. Based on what I've just seen, uh, I can change mouse pointer speed. I can change uh, like... Uh, now uh, what what buttons uh, to assign here uh, by the way it's uh, uh, usually done like uh, this there are a lot of uh, you know parameters like this like some special functions here so uh, how do you uh, look up which button uh, number you should uh, right here you just open jcpl you press some button for example i want this to be my right mouse button and i want the mini stick button to be my left mouse button so uh yeah it uh no this serial output it doesn't like to work as a joystick so we'll refresh it Uh, I have commented out the serial print lines, so uh, you can see it now shows nothing, and now it works as a joystick again. Uh, yeah, so uh, I want this to be my right mouse button, and I want this to be my left mouse button. So button 12 for right mouse button, button 11 for left mouse button. So uh, let's do just that. So I will... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I will set 11 and 12 here, and now you can see that uh, these buttons no longer press uh, joystick buttons, but this presses button 4. This was my previous, uh, you know, left mouse button. So uh, I can do, now I can close this with my left mouse button and I can I press my right mouse button. So it uh, works quite well. Uh, I would like to change it back to my uh, you know, default configuration. Uh, similar way if I want for example to change my uh, you know some other button assignment uh, I may have here like uh, push the talk button for uh, my uh, psychic grip right uh, I can uh, look it up the same way so uh, that's it guys uh, thanks for watching uh, if I haven't uh, you know touched some uh, discussed some questions uh, uh, you may have here uh, please feel free to ask them in uh, comments I will try to answer them uh, this is uh, you know this software allows for uh, endless or almost endless uh, expansion. Uh, I will make another video uh, with you know more uh, detailed instructions on how to add your own devices. Uh, but for now, that's it, and uh, I hope you will find it useful. So, thanks again. See ya. Bye.